Hi there, it's Steve Crabb. In this episode of Living Phobia Free, I'm going to be talking about some medical phobias and specifically about emetophobia. Now, if you suffer from emetophobia, you will already know that it's a phobia of either being sick, fear of others being sick, and can be a combination of the two. It's a very common phobia, actually. In fact, probably about 20% of the people I see on a monthly basis come to me for dealing with this particular issue. And it's something I've got a lot of experience with. So in this episode, I want to share some insights so you get a little bit of more information about what's been going on and also how you can change it. And uh, my first experience of working with emetophobes was about, well, it was about 18 years ago now. It's the very first phobia workshop that Paul McKenna ever did. And um, I'd just been assisting for about a year. And it was the first one we'd ever done. And we had two days working with a group of about 100, 150 people that all had phobias. And I remember Paul saying at the very beginning, wasn't sure how it was going to go, what the structure of the day was going to be. So it started off really simply. He got on stage, did a phobia demonstration with somebody, and I think it was to do with public speaking, and then basically split the group up into different phobias. So dog phobias over in one section, height phobias in another, claustrophobia somewhere else emetophobia somewhere else and uh, then the assistants all went and worked with a group and as I saw the assistants go and get a group I, I was a new assistant at the time so I was just sort of following the uh, following the lead of others even though it was the first time they'd done it as well and I ended up with the emetophobe group um, because it was a group that so many people think of as a difficult phobia to deal with and I don't believe that at all I think they're all as simple as each other when you know how so it was my first opportunity to group and to do a group phobia cure. And I'm always cautious about using the word cure because it implies that there's an illness. Um, so let's call it treatment. And 15 people. So we had two hours to work with these people. And literally, I took them through one technique, then another technique, through another technique, until we got to the very end when they were all sorted. And we knew they were sorted because we had to test the work. And there was only a couple of ways to test the work, which was to either bring in somebody who was sick, somebody who was feeling ill, and see how people reacted, or if the work had been done, they wouldn't react. So we had to be a bit creative, and we got some chicken soup and had people pretending to purge. And when we first did that, most of the group freaked out. So we had to test that they were actually phobic, and they were. But by the end of it, they were fine. We even had people going around putting fingers in their mouths, trying to gag in order to you know, replicate being sick, being ill, and the work had been done. So for me, it was a very, very valuable learning experience. And in the nearly 20 years that I've been a coach and a therapist, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of people with emetophobes. So there are a couple of unique things related to emetophobia, which are different to most phobias. And I only know this because there's say, such a large number of people I've worked with. So I'm able to see some of the patterns. Now, the phobia comes about because you've learned to be anxious about either somebody being sick or being sick yourself. Okay. Now, one of the things that happens is when someone has a phobia, they experience this generalized anxiety. The chemistry builds up in the body, the stress chemistry builds up. And if you ask most people that suffer from emetophobia, you know, are you anxious? Generally, and it is a generalization, so not everyone fits to this they would go, yes. And if you ask them, how anxious are you? Again, total generalization, but zero is no anxiety, 10 is the top. Most of them operate around the three to five and sometimes you know, up to the sixes and sevens. And for them, that's normal. Now, what this means is this, their body is flushed and full up with the stress chemistry. And when we are stressed, when we're anxious or fearful, the body produces a response, a fear response. It goes down through the midline of the body. What happens is the brain says something to be scared of gets the body ready for fight or flight. And the feeling of anxiety or fear always starts down the midline of the body so that we can operate the arms if we're going to fight and operate the legs if we're going to run for flight. And for most people, it fires off up this way. So the feeling goes, oh, I feel anxious, I feel anxious, I feel anxious. And it keeps firing off. And if it's firing off quickly on the zero to 10 scale, that would be eight, nine or 10. If it's going slowly, it will just be mild anxiety. 
Now, this is the thing that's unique to emetophobes, is this. 90% of the people, when I ask them if they're suffering from emetophobe, where, which way does the anxiety go? They go, they do this, they gesture like this with their hands. So it's quite often, it, it starts around here. So for some people it starts here, some people it starts here, some people it starts here. But for most emetophobes, it starts here. And the feeling's like this. Now, notice how it looks. It looks and mimics and matches the purging sensation, the being ill, the being sick. So when most emetophobes are anxious, they also feel like they're going to be sick. So obviously, if you've been suffering from emetophobia, that will probably resonate with you. And as I say, it's a generalization. So not everybody fits this, but it's a general rule. So the feeling of anxiety is basically the neurology firing off and going, time to get anxious. So one nerve fires off to the next nerve to the next nerve. You may have heard the phrase, you know, we get waves of emotion. And that's what's happening. It fires off and fires off again, fires off again, fires off again. And it's the signal to do flight or fight. Now, if you're an emetophobe and you've been experiencing this anxiety, one of the things you can do is just take a moment just to notice whereabouts in your body is the anxiety. Does it start here? here or here. For most people, it will be here and it will fire off. And what you do is really simple. It's just one simple technique which will help you. Okay. Give it a color. Notice the speed that it's going and do this with your hands so you can, you know, you get a representation of the speed that it's going. So imagine it's a wheel. Okay. Give it a color. And about 90% of the people, when you ask them what color is it, they'll say red. And if you didn't say red, that's not a problem as well, okay? And notice the speed it's going and then drain the color out and begin to slow it down. Not too quickly, because the neurology has been so used to feeling anxious. We need to train it to slow down, okay? So drain the color out, lift your head up as well so you're looking up, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, and slow it down. Now, what you're doing when you do this is you're teaching your body to slow down the release of the stress chemistry, of the adrenaline, of the cortisol, of the noradrenaline, okay? You're slowing it down, slowing it down. And for some of you, the feeling of anxieties or stress or fear or panic will start to subside because you're controlling the release of chemistry, okay? Take a deep breath in when you breathe out. Just relax the jaw and drain the color out even more. Slow it down and slow it down and slow it down. Now, for some of you, any anxiety will start to drop out. And when that happens, what you do is you imagine the wheel, flip it over the other way, give it a different color and move it in the other direction. Okay. Now, what you're doing is by using your imagination, you're moving different chemistry through the neurology. Okay, so for many of you, you'll start to experience a, a feeling of calmness. Now, this is something you can practice. So if there's any anxiety, you notice it, you just move the hands, you represent the speed that it's firing off, and you slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. And when it gets down to one or two out of ten, then you flip it over, give it a different color, move it in the other direction, breathe in and relax the jaw. Now, for some of you, if you've been anxious for prolonged periods of time, what will happen is you might slow it down, but then it will start to speed up again, just simply because it's been used to doing that. Okay. So there are many other techniques that you can do to literally train your body to calm down and to relax, because that's what we do. We teach the unconscious mind and the body that whatever it is that you are phobic of or fearful of, you can be okay with. Now, by the way, when it comes to somebody being ill, or being sick, so for example, let's say I'm on the train and there's somebody on the other side who looks like they're going to be, be ill, I'm going to be cautious, but I'm not going to be terrified. I'm going to remain relaxed and calm and see if I can be of service. Whereas what you've learned to do is to move away from it very quickly. Okay, try to avoid it. So as I say, it's a very common phobia. It generally is, uh, ex people experience general background anxiety as well as the emetophobe. And if that's not you, that's okay as well, because I say these are all generalizations. So 
simply practicing this calming down technique, that will help you to train your body to just relax. Basically, it's one way of starting to switch off the protection mechanism. Okay. Something else that will help you as well is that because if you've been stressed for a prolonged period of time, your body will be awash with stress chemistry, drink plenty of water, help to fr flush the system out. Now, occasionally what can happen is people with emetophobes can, because of the anxiety feeling, anytime they're anxious, if they eat, they can also associate anxiety with eating. So it can also be associated with some eating disorders. So that's one simple technique. I'm going to be sharing many, many other techniques that will help you to relax, help you to calm down and help you to switch off the overprotection mechanism. So practice that, practice slowing it down and flipping it the other way. Now, if for you the anxiety wasn't going this way, for some people it goes this way, some it goes this way. Whichever way the anxiety goes, you give it the color and you slow it down. But as I say, probably over 90% of people with emetophobes, the feeling is this because it mimics the, the vomiting experience. So whenever they're anxious, they feel like they're going to be sick. And because they feel like they're going to be sick, they get more anxious. And so what we're doing by using this technique is interrupting that normal process. Make sense? So practice it. And if you like what you hear, or if you've got any questions, or any comments, please like, please share, please subscribe. And remember this, living phobia free is possible. It's always a case of when, it's never a case of if. Be well. Thanks for listening.